What's up, guys? Welcome to the Foot and Fist Sports Network, where today we're going to be talking about UFC Fight Night Tampa, Glover Teixeira versus Rashad Evans. Now, even though this wasn't exactly the most flashy card or the card with the biggest names, it was definitely a card that had big implications on the title picture of various divisions. For example, we had Khabib Nurmagomedov, who was supposed to fight Tony Ferguson for the number one contender spot, but Tony Ferguson had to pull out due to injury, so Khabib had to take on um, Daryl Horcher on short notice. And it was essentially a tune-up fight for him to just to come back and claim the number one contender spot. Whereas Glover Teixeira had a chance taking on Rashad Evans to put himself among the top three, which would be Rumble Johnson and Alexander Gustafson, who were to ne- probably get the next title fight at the light heavyweight division. Uh, so I'm going to talk about who you know where these fights leave some of the biggest names on the card. Starting off with Habib Nurmagomedov. You know, even after losing the main event status to El K- with El Kukui being hurt, uh, his fight was without a doubt the most important one of the night because he is the guy that everybody believes is the best fighter in like in the lightweight division, and he had a he had an opportunity to take on someone not as good as Kukui because I think Kukui is tr- is one of the best fighters in the world at lightweight, so he had a chance to take on somebody who's not not definitely not at the same level. And maybe not take as much of a risk of facing ring rust and just maybe getting the UFC jitters once again. And he really went out there. He put on a great performance against Horcher. And after getting the win dominant dominant fashion like everybody expected him to, he called up for the title shot. And I think the UFC likely will give it to him, although he does have to wait until after Ramadan. Um... So if he his next fight will be probably September, October, or November, you know, around that time. So it really does depend on what happens with the Los Angeles, uh, Eddie Alvarez. But I think that if he doesn't fight for the title, then he should take on Tony Ferguson just to get out of the way. You know, they were supposed to fight many times, and it just never happened due to both guys being hurt. And uh, I think it would be a great fight, and it would be the definitive number one contender fight, basically. Um... But I could definitely say that he probably does deserve to just fight for the title um, if you know Eddie Alvarez or Dos Anjos are healthy in time to fight. You know, to fight Khabib next. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk about Glover Teixeira. You know, after his KO win, uh, Teixeira is now on a on a three fight win streak, and he's really making a case for another title shot. And he'll probably take on Anthony Rumble Johnson next because he called him out right after the fight, and Rumble responded. Uh, so that would be a very interesting fight, and I think that Gustafson he lost to uh, he lost to Rumble, and then he lost to Daniel to Daniel Cormier. So he's gonna have to take maybe another one, just one more fight against some someone like Ryan Bader, who's also out coming off of a loss, to get himself back into contention. So I think that Rumble Johnson versus Glover Teixeira is probably the next the next fight that's gonna be a title eliminator to see who takes on John Jones and Daniel Cormier. Uh, next up, we have Rashad Evans. You know, it's been a rough few years for Rashad, who has had various injury problems, and now he's also on a two-fight losing streak. So it may be time for him to start considering retirement. You know, he's not getting any younger, and just he has to look at the title picture at light heavyweight. He's not beating any of the top three or four guys. Maybe even not even not maybe not even the top five. You know, with OSP and and um, and Ryan Bader sitting there. So. His other, his only other option that I could say would be, you know, maybe a good option for him would be would be to go down to middleweight and see if maybe he can rejuvenate his career, starting off with a fresh start in a new weight class, and see if maybe he can do something there. But I think that he really should start taking into consideration retirement because you know he he does he has a family and he's taken he's taken some big shots in his career. And it would be a shame to see to see him just get, you know, keep getting beat up like this. It's not fun to see. And I just, you know, no matter what, Rashad's one of my favorite guys, and I just hope for the, I hope I hope the best for the guy. Uh, next up, Tony Ferguson. You know, even if El Kukui didn't actually fight, this card did have a big impact on his career. You know, before this, he was supposed to fight Khabib and become possibly the number one contender. And now, since Khabib is going into Ramadan and is going to be holding out for a title fight, he might not actually get that number one contender spot and he might have to wait even longer. However, there is a really interesting fight coming up, which is Edson Barboza versus Anthony Pettis. You know, Kukui recently beat Edson Barboza, 
and there's no secret that he wants to fight Anthony Pettis. So if Pettis does beat Barboza, I think it would be a great fight to see Anthony Pettis versus Tony Kukui Ferguson. You know, uh, Kukui's... He's a nightmare because he's got good striking. He's got legit jujitsu. He's tremendous on the bottom. He's very unorthodox. He's creepy. You know, he's just a he's just a brutal guy to go up against. And I think you know he would he would love to go into a challenge with Anthony Pettis. And Anthony Pettis is probably going to come out here really hungry. And it would be a great fight. Another opponent that would that I could see him going against would be Donald Cerrone. You know, who is fighting at one seventy against Patrick Cote soon, but. There's there's no doubt that Donald Cerrone is one of the best lightweights in the world as well. So it'd be it would be great to see, you know, any of these guys take on El Kukui and there's no there's no shortage of opponents for Tony Ferguson at one fifty five. Next up we got Rose Rose Namajunas. Uh, you know, the U, the the UFC's women's strawweight division has a lot of contenders and Rose Namajunas is one of those women. You know, Tisha Torres was a very big test for her, and Tisha Torres had actually beaten her before in Invicta. So this was a good chance for Rose to avenge a loss, and that's exactly what she did. She got the win. You know, she's 23 years old, so she has plenty of time to go for a title shot. There's no rush, and she she should probably take one more fight, if not two, just to sort of round out her game, because Joanna Champion is a tremendous fighter, and just... You know, Claudia Cadelia put on one hell of a fight against Joanna back in the day. You know, like what a year and a half ago. So I don't really think that Rose is quite there yet. So she should probably take a little bit of time before taking a fight against them. But I think that if a rematch with Carlos Barso would be pretty interesting because we we get to see how much her wrestling has improved. But also Michelle Watterson. Uh, the Karate Hottie would be a pretty interesting fight because you know both girls are very flashy, and it would just be it would be an entertaining fight more than a testing fight. I, even though uh, Michelle Watterson, I'm sure she's really good, uh, but I think you know Rose is has shown that she is a very high level fighter, so it'd be interesting to see. Uh, next up, last but not least, we have Cub Swanson. You know, just a couple years ago, Cub Swanson was right up there for a title shot. Then Frank Yeager took him to school, and Max Holloway beat him after that. But this last this past weekend, he returned to Tampa. He returned to form in Tampa, and what a performance he put on against Hakran Diaz. He dominated the fight. He looked very fast. He landed some very big shots, and he hurt Hakran Diaz pretty bad and was close to finishing him. I would love to see um, Cub Swanson take on either Chad Mendes or Ricardo Lamas next so we can see where he's at in his game, and most importantly, where he's at compared to the rest of the guys in the top 10 in that division. Because I think that Cub Swanson, everybody knows how good he is. It's just a matter of, has he made the improvements in his wrestling to compete with guys like Chad Mendez and Ricardo Lamas? Uh, And it'll be interesting to see what he can do against somebody like that. Uh, That's it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. Please let me know in the comments what you think some of these guys should do. What do you think the UFC should, the UFC should do next? And uh, just if you did enjoy it, please subscribe. I'll be getting a new microphone soon, so the audio quality and thing like, some things like that will start will start to get much better. And this channel is relatively new, so it's gonna be there's a lot of improvements coming. And uh, I hope you stick around to see how this how this channel grows. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care.